a weeknight meal with salmon and asparagus made at the same time in the same baking pan at the same temperature. That's what this is all about. And it's gonna be delicious. Can't wait for you to try it. For me, a weeknight meal needs to be something I can put together quickly and maybe even put on one sheet pan and cook at the same time. That is what this salmon and asparagus is all about. And it's two of my favorite things. Why? Asparagus I have coming in from the garden. That's my favorite thing when I can have the things that I grow, the things that I pick, the things that I nurture, and actually use them in the kitchen for nutrition, health, but also just good tasting food. Salmon also. Great nutrition. I love to get wild caught salmon. Have it once in a while because it is pricey, but it is full of nutrition. Look at that beautiful color. And you know what? When you have good ingredients like this, you hardly need to do anything to it. So to start, we're going to use our asparagus. Now, if you buy asparagus in the store, a lot of times it's been shipped and it's going to have dry tips. Probably about the bottom inch will be pretty dry. How do you know that? Just kind of break it off. And if you bite on it, it's going to be woody. Now, what I grow in the garden and then pick and bring in and use quickly doesn't dry out like that. So I don't have to cut any off. But if you're gonna buy this in a store, make sure to check your bottom and you'll probably just have to cut about the bottom half to one inch off depending. But these I wanna keep in nice spears and I just wanna lay them out. Now we're gonna to have to spread them slightly because we're gonna have salmon that's going with them. So I'm gonna kind of, you know, make it a little bit, you know, nestle some salmon here and there. You'll see what I'm doing. But what we're doing is we're creating something that we can make as a meal. So we're gonna have this here and I wanna make sure Asparagus really can cook really quickly. And I think the asparagus is best either cooked really quickly at high heat or you're gonna make it really mushy. So if you cook it really long, you wanna use it more in like a soup or something where it really just melts into it. Here, when I was growing up, we had creamed asparagus on toast all the time. That's what my mom would do. My dad loved it and it is good. But here what we're doing is just gonna bring out the essence of the asparagus because it has good flavor already because it's so fresh. We're gonna put some olive oil. I just really wanna drizzle the olive oil all over it. And what this does, when you put something in the oven to roast, and I wanna make sure to kind of coat it. Don't just drizzle it. I always get annoyed when I see people drizzle and then I think, well, that's not actually getting it on the asparagus. You need to actually get your hands in there, get dirty and coat it around. Because the thing is, when you put an oil or a fat like olive oil is, and you put it in, in the oven, what it does is it actually brings out more flavor. It helps it get some nice caramelization and it really does just enhance everything. So what we're gonna do to this asparagus, we're gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna take some salt and we're gonna sprinkle on some salt. And you know what? When you sprinkle on at a higher, see how I'm kind of holding it up a little bit? You actually end up using less. You would think you're gonna use a lot, but you don't because it more evenly distributes it. And then I'm gonna make sure to put on some pepper. To me, pepper, asparagus, salt, oil, this right here is a winning combination. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our salmon on. So this is all gonna to cook together. It's all just gonna to roast together. And what I wanna do is somewhat place the salmon so I'm not gonna to too much crowd it out. Now if it overlaps a little bit, don't feel bad. It's not a huge deal because it's not, it's gonna cook pretty quickly. But here what you're doing, you can see, is creating these beautiful pockets where you're having some salmon, you're having the asparagus, and it's all gonna to cook together. Now I wanna to wash my hand. I always keep soapy water in the sink when I'm cooking because then you can actually get in here, wash your hands quickly, dry them, especially when you're talking about raw meat. So now what we wanna do is think about the salmon. Salmon is good by itself, but sometimes it's really nice to dress it up just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is take a small bowl. I'm gonna add a little bit of Dijon mustard. Now, a good Dijon mustard goes a long way in your kitchen. What do I mean by that? It can be a huge flavor enhancer, but it can also just, is a chameleon. It works in dressings, it works in marinades. It works like this on top of a meat, and now we're adding some good maple syrup to it. So the sweetness with the pungency of a good mustard, it really works together to be something kind of more amazing. So I'm just whisking that up, and this creates, you know, a sweetened, not honey mustard, obviously, but like a mapley mustard that has this like sweet, almost spicy edge with that mustard. So now what I'm gonna do is just brush this on the salmon. So I have a pastry brush that I use only for things like meats, because I don't want the butter to be that I use when I do pastry or something. I don't want that to be on here. So what we're doing is just giving this a nice brush. And really what we're doing is just enhancing the salmon. And what I like to do when I think of weeknight meals like this, I like to think of a couple things that are gonna elevate maybe the mundane. So maybe we have fish or salmon every so often. We think, well, what's gonna make it different? Maple and mustard, and then what we're gonna put on top of this yet. So when it comes to weeknight meals, we all have that question every day of our life, what's gonna be for supper? Some of us would never think of cooking something, but this might be the dish, this might, that actually makes you think, I can do that. 
And that's what this is all about. Because if I can do it, anybody out there can do this. So I have the mustard somewhat evenly dispersed. It's pretty simple, nothing too heavy, nothing too thick. And now I'm gonna take that wonderful pantry staple. That's like a secret in our pantry, but we love it. Everyone has this, everything bagel seasoning. Now, it doesn't matter what brand you use, because what is wonderful about everything bagel is it has salt in it, it has dark and light sesame seeds, it has dehydrated onion usually. And you know what? We all have it because, well, we heard the hype about it, so we all went out and bought it. But maybe you just don't use it all the time. This is a great way to use it. You're getting the poppy seeds, the sesame seeds, that salt in it, and the onion, and it's really just a great way to add something special. And it almost creates, what I'm gonna say is a crust on top of this. It creates this great little something special. So even if, even if you wanna have people over and you're like, I worked all day, I don't wanna do anything. Look at this. In like 20 minutes or less, we're creating a meal and soon we're gonna be eating it. So I'm gonna pop this into the oven. We're gonna roast it all at the same temperature, same amount of time, and it'll be perfectly cooked. I took it out of the oven a few moments ago. Now, when I get salmon out of the oven, what do I do? I check the temperature. That's how you know when something's done. So I always check to make sure it's 120 degrees. Then as it sets here, it finishes baking. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but same with cookies or anything we take out of the oven. All that residual heat means as it's sitting here, it actually gets up to 125 degrees, which is just perfect. Now I, at the end, like to take lemon. You could serve it with a piece of lemon, but I especially surprisingly like the lemon over the asparagus. I think it really wakens it up. It brightens all the flavor and it really just makes it sing. Now you can of course put this on the salmon too, but there's something about the asparagus with that. Now, as it has sat here a few minutes and come up to the correct temperature, it has really also reabsorbed all this juices. And let's look at the salmon. Let's just look. Look at, oh, look how that just flakes. Do you see that beautiful salmon? Look at how it is flaky. It is beautiful. That color is perfect. Don't overcook your salmon, because it won't be this good. What I love about it is, it has lots of good salmon flavor, but then it has that, that maple-y, mustardy, sweet thing going on top. That was so good. The asparagus, by the way, let's just take a piece. I'll cut it. I would just bite it if it was just me, but since I'm on camera, I'll cut it. Mmm. I love asparagus. Love it. What I do like about it, though, is it has to be crisp tender, meaning it has to be roasted just enough where it had definitely took off its fresh edge, but retained all of its flavor and a little bit of crunch to it. That's what this is. Olive oil, salt, pepper, a little bit of lemon. Perfectly roasted asparagus and salmon at the same time, same temperature. This is a weeknight meal that I think I know you will enjoy. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you share this video around because when you share these videos, it helps me so much, but guess what? It helps everyone else see this is super easy. If this guy can do it on a farm in Iowa, anybody can do it. So let's go put some food on the table and enjoy it. Check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe and all my other recipes, they're all on there. Until next time, make something good and enjoy it. That's the point of life.